how you guys do it. I'm like tired. I am so tired. Maybe it's all that conditioning and training we did. For the first time today though, I honestly feel like we belong here, Yukon. I really do. Yeah. I feel like we belong here. I had a dream that spoke to me pretty clearly and pretty powerfully. In my dream, I woke up, stepped outside of my house, stood in my yard. My whole pack came into the yard. And I remember feeling so alive and so full of life. And this voice came over that said to me, I gave you this life because I trust you. I gave you this life because I know you'll do what you're supposed to do. <clears throat> All right, Belle. Come here, beautiful girl. Come on, my beautiful. Come here, sweet girl. Come here, Belle. Belle. Come here, beautiful girl. It's okay. Come here. Come here, sweet girl. Where do you want to? Come here, Rosarito. Who's that, my Taz? Did you eat your breakfast, amigo? You know, I'm feeling, <clears throat> to be honest, so beat up. I, I, uh, my back hurts. My hamstrings feel like they're on fire. My shoulder, my left shoulder feels <laughs> it's on, like it's on fire. But I'm really proud of them right now. You know, I was looking at uh, training logs yesterday when we first started in September. The first initial training run and that was I just think about all the the swim workouts we did in the summer too you know and, well I don't know just taking care of everything we could and I feel like it's boiling down to next week all of that and if we fall short I know that it's my problem you know it's my fault these dogs are so amazing I, you can't ever blame the dogs just myself but I just hope and pray that we can we can last you know we can do something special here on paper we're no one <laughs> we have no chance whatsoever but I have to believe otherwise yeah these dogs I believe in them I was searching for an open door I was looking for a piece of me it's a feeling that I tend to get. Well, Fernando is, is uh, it right. when you break it down, it means warrior, adventurer. My parents were really big on, they really believe on your name Before defines who you are. Even when I was thinking of names for our children, 
I remember my mother pulled me aside and she's like, remember, your name will define who you are because that's what you'll be called your entire life. And whatever you're called, that's what kind of gravitates toward you. You know, warrior in the sense of fighting for what I believe in with these dogs. My parents both, especially my father, he's very, education's everything, which is right, right? You have to be educated to function. But it was more so with my dad that I, I feel like he wanted me to pursue a professional career, whether it was engineering uh, in the medical field or some kind of, I don't know, something professional. Because I, I think getting my athletic abilities definitely comes from my father, I feel like. But who I am as a person, I feel more connected to my grandfather in that sense where I was he was up in the mountains and for days and days at a time. And he was the one that the rich ranchers, wealthy ranchers would call him to travel even for a few days at a time just to get to their ranch so he could train their horses. There's that old patent saying, it's a lonely road to the top. I don't think I really knew what that meant until the last three years. We were driving down the a snow covered road one day just shortly after being married and Fernando had mentioned that he used to dog sled and he wondered what I thought about it and I said that'd be awesome to go up to Alaska and check it out and do it. I didn't know that was a thing you could do here. With our program a lot of our dogs, most the majority of our dogs are rescues. Having to put a puzzle piece together in order to create a good racing team is so difficult. We, we don't have the advantage that other kennels do where they breed their dogs and they know exactly what kind of lines they're getting. So when, they're, when those pups become yearlings, they're in training for the next stage to become world champions. We have to finagle this puzzle, put it together and somehow put it in the right, we, we call it like artwork in a sense. We rescued our first dog off of KSL. We found a dog that needed a home, and we went and got her, and Fernando said, let's train her. I think I can get a team up and going. And within a week, we had our first team, and we were running tours that week. When I think about him, he's the most incredible man that I could have ever been blessed with. I've never seen somebody that can work so hard, break his body every single day, fighting against everything that he has to go through. Maybe he hasn't eaten all day or slept in weeks and he still gets up and he still gets out there and he does it even if he's sick and can't talk. His most incredible quality is that he's passionate and he never ever stops. Dana and I are our own team in that sense of bouncing ideas off each other and it's our own like lonely road to the top in that sense, you know? Pedigree Stage Stop Race is a prestige race. Some people have said it's the second most competitive race in the entire world. It's equivalent to what the World Series is to baseball. It's eight days long, eight stages. It, the stages go throughout the state of Wyoming. We dip into Idaho for a day, come back in. Roughly two to three hundred miles depending on the season. So I'm gonna take it up a few notches and see how uh, efficient they are, you know, as far as like a, so this, this run's supposed to be like a tempo run. So I just want nice, honest, and fluid, rather than hills and power, it's just cruising. Pedigree is a great way to see where our kennel stands with some of the most elite mushers in the world. And I know that a lot of the competitors and all the mushers that compete have their proven bloodlines. We have our rescues just try to see where we land amongst the ranks.
it was stressful those first few years. It was hard. We had to feed the dogs first, of course. So there was times where we were eating noodles and boxes of Fruit Loops and that was it. We were afraid, how are we gonna make rent this month? Or how are we gonna pay for cars? I remember there was a time where we couldn't pay for my car and we had to go surrender it. But it was a choice that we made to do that so that we could keep doing our, our dream. And it was worth it, but I never was sad or mad that we made those choices. It felt it felt right, like we were doing what we were supposed to do. Um, they kept it between 13 and 14 miles an hour, which is perfect. That's for nine miles. It's good for this season. It's a little warm, there's more moisture in the air, so it's not that crisp, like cool weather like they like it. But for the weather we had, uh, is phenomenal. The only thing we need to do now is um, make sure their their pads are built up a little better. Uh, this gravel stuff can be a little rough, so I decided to pull the plug a little early just because I didn't want to run them a little more than, than that. But next time we'll come out, uh, hopefully it'll be a little more muddier, a little softer, and we can really get some better distance. But it was a phenomenal run. Nonetheless, it was awesome. It was a really good one. <laughs> you okay? Mm -hmm. You know, what's crazy is that they're just not used to this gravel stuff. You know, we're, we're running on we're super soft dirt. Stuff. I think Fernando is just the best person to be around and to associate with. And I feel like if you hang out with him a little too long, you'll, you'll end up chasing your dreams and accomplishing them. <laughs> It's funny how little dog, this dog this small is like leading our race team, you know? She's got a lot of oh. passion, a lot of heart. Yes, she does. She's a pro. She needs you in though, okay? Let's go home. I want to create a better life. I want to create this safe haven for these dogs that they can live free and feel wild here, but secure at the same time. And I get this asked all the time, you know, what is a, what's a Mexican doing driving a dog sled? <laughs> I don't know, like, and that's why our ranch is, you know, Rancho Luna Lobos. It's I'm sticking true to my heritage and not trying to kind of put what I am or what my heritage is behind a curtain. The moment we pull out the sled from the trailer and from when the sled hits the snow, that symbolizes a commitment. It symbolizes the start of a journey that no matter what the winter throws at us, whether it's horrible snow or epic snow or long training nights, we have to roll with the punches. Training towards this race is about to start up, so here we go. Our dogs are dogs first, athletes second. But as athletes, we need to take their nutrition, their diet, and training regimens so serious and we cannot afford to cut any corners.
This is my first real big professional international race. I don't know what else to expect. We're looking for dogs and their speed. We're looking for tranquility. We're looking at momentum. And most importantly, we're looking to see how fluid these athletes can run and for how long. It leads down to one moment, the pedigree stage stop race. So here we are a week before pedigree, feeling pretty nervous, to be honest. Um, this is where everything comes to play, all the training, all the self-belief, all the confidence, haze in the barn, so to speak. I mean, at this point, there's, there's nothing more we can do. Yeah, so today we're going up to Jackson. Good long haul. We gave the dogs their breakfast and they're settled in to make the long drive. Jackson's always an exciting town to pull up to. We're just gonna get settled and I'm gonna keep my mind clear of all that negative stuff and just stay positive about everything. <laughs> I'm getting a lot of Good wishes. It's awesome. Wait, are you, where are you? You're on this side? No, you're on the other side. How are you feeling, man? Nicole, how are you feeling? You tired? Are you tired? Me too. There it is. It's good looking poop, man. I like the way that poop looks. It's okay. I need you to stay focused. We can do something special, huh, Walter? We can do something special, huh? What do you think? It's your second time at this race, huh? Going a little further. You, my friend, are a special dog. Yeah, you are. When we first got, Walter was a puppy that we had. And uh, he was a runt of his litter. He was so weak that we didn't think he was going to make it. We didn't think he was going to live. So we really had to nurse him back to health. And then he makes the international racing team, right? Our <laughs> team that runs an international competition is pretty impressive. My Wally. It's funny, I, I don't know, you know, nights like this or every night, really, I can, I feel like I, I read them like telepathically almost, you know, like if they're feeling hungry or 
more thirsty than hungry. I'll tell you one thing, us, the road leading up to this race has been so up and down. Like, it's easy to lose hope when you're training so hard and a couple of the dogs get like a stomach bug or they act like that. There's a lot of top names, a lot of top talent. I kind of psych myself up, but at the same time, it's like, I, I'll say like, that's where I want to be, you know, that's what I, that's what I want to be, is I want to be, I don't know, I want to be, I want to be one of the top kennels, huh? Because I know you guys can do it. You kind of remind me of, of myself in a weird way, Walter. Except I'm not as crazy as you are, though. That's one thing. I don't just bark at people when they walk by, Walter. After these eight days, it'll be a whole year before we race again, essentially, you know? So it's a good way to celebrate our, our like, what, like since June? Eight, eight months of fitness, pretty much, of building up for this. I really need your help this time, Yuka. I need you to stay focused, Amigo. You have no idea how much I'm relying on you, Yuka. You and me, we're gonna work together, okay? I know you feel what I'm feeling. I know you know what I'm thinking, I know you do. Tell her. Tell her, you're gonna give yourself a heart attack. He's like a teenage boy that is really interested in girls and doesn't even know what to do. <laughs> He's so crazy. Wally, you make my life a little easier because you jump into the truck and I don't have to carry you. Whoa, that's so impressive, Mr. Walter. Wally, come here, amigo. Walter, up here. Wally. <laughs> Walter. Walter. Wally. 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 Walter. Walter. Come here, Wally. Come here, Walter. Walter. Good boy. Come here. Come here, sweet boy. I imagine he's like uh, one of the dudes over in India, right, with the, with the little flute. And he plays the he plays the flute and he calms them all down. He's just he's just so great with the dogs. It's amazing. It's 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 I've never seen anyone handle his dogs the way that he does, and they listen to him. So we're here at vet checks. We have to get all the dogs checked out, make sure they're healthy, make sure they're at a good weight, that they have all their vaccines. We have to track every single dog that we have, what their gender is, color, age, um, and then we just kind of wait our turn in line for people, for the vets to come and do their routine check, and then we're good until tonight. It's a good, it's a good indication to compare, I guess, even with other teams to see how good a pro. Hey. Tell her we don't talk like that, amigo. Don't talk like that. Tell her, Goob, don't talk like that. It's not nice. Hey, hey, don't talk like that. It's not nice, amigo. Hey, hey don't, we don't talk. Like, hey, I forgot you two don't get along as well. I mean, it looks so legit. You know, everyone's such a veteran here. It's like with like proven bloodlines, proven kennels, amazing like racing resumes. You know, everyone's. <laughs> Pretty intimidating, you know. You're gonna do great. <laughs> He's so fun. There we go. This is unsir. Unsir. Yep. Unsir. Unsir. Okay. Okay. Everything's clear on unsir. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Kim. Yeah, Thank you. Yeah, what was your okay. name again? Dr. Garrett. Yeah. Dr. Dr. Garrett. Martin. Thank you so much. Hello. Hi. Hey, good. How are you? I have your junior musher here. I'd like to meet you. Hey. Hi. What's your name, amigo? Ledger. Ledger. Nice Ledger. to meet you. So you gonna ride with me tonight? Okay, well, make it adventurous. <laughs> With the prize money being 164k purse, of course that would be a huge dream come true. I feel like that would definitely be validation that all his hard work has paid off. How many dogs do you think I own personally? 25. A little higher. 80. Not quite that much. 10. 60. I have 51 dogs. Oh my god. Now. 51 dogs, what does that mean? That's a lot of money, money a lot of food, right? These guys have to eat a ton. Now, a lot of poop. Some days, I don't know if I'm a musher or a professional pooper scooper. <laughs> Noah, come on, buddy. Hey, you can't lay on the ground here. Come on, come on. 
No, there's a lot of dogs that poop and pee on this ground. I would call this the 25 fastest teams on the continent. We're going against some of the most elite mushers in the world. And that in itself is so intimidating. So I'm scared. I'm really nervous. Boys, are you ready for this? Walter, Taz, Nickel, and swing. Walter, Taz, Will, Nickel, swing. Chepi and uh, Yukon in lead. Here we go, buddy. Listen to me. I really need you to focus on this one, okay? I really need your help today, tonight, okay? You understand? I need you to stay focused or I need you to help me, okay? I'm counting on you guys to help me. Remember the dogs, there's a lot of people here. There's a lot of people that are really excited. There's a lot too. of people cheering. The dogs can feed off of that too. The main thing we need to do is just keep them calm, okay? Let's talk to them. All right, I love you boys, okay? Let's stay with them, let's go. Please stay focused, okay? Please stay focused. When my hands grip the sled, the sled's connected to the gang line. The gang line hooks onto each dog. And there are no better pieces, no stronger pieces, than just one strong unit. When I'm out there with them, I want them to feel free. I want them to feel wild, like I do. I'd say there's been a lot of obstacles that he's had to overcome in his life to be where he is. He's had to let go of those ideas that this isn't, it's not just a hobby. He, he's had to struggle with that idea of, am I legit? Am, is what I'm doing important? Does it count? Where are my boots? Oh, they're in the truck. Don't talk like that, it's not nice. So they don't need that. Okay, so you're in the right spot. You two go together in the front. It's like putting a puzzle together. You kind of gonna have to play it smart, rotating those three lead dogs. My females aren't as strong as Yukon. Yukon's kind of the key part of everything. So we'll see if we can hang on tight. It's always intimidating for me pulling into the parking lot where all the mushers are and you put on like this fake smile. It's not fake, but it's like a nervous smile. But you know, they think you're completely fine and 
wow, he's completely composed, you know, and has his stuff together. But in my mind, I'm just like a wreck, like a train wreck. Like, how am I going to be able to compete with these guys? Yes. You are at 932. Right. Perfect. You'll be following JR, there? who's going to be over there. Okay. You what time is it now? I'm kind of losing my mind a little bit, to be honest. I just need to, I need to like calm down though. If you could just keep it down a little so I can think for a second, Miss Denali. I just need to like not freak out. I was, it's different. So I just looked into all of the things. I just need to relax, man. I just need to relax, seriously. That's all right. Okay, man. Let's think about this. Here we go. Let's do this, man. Okay, come on, come on, come on. Boom, boom. The airplane mode. So. <sighs> there we go. Boom, boom. I'd like to say I was like stoic and stuff, and like it was just like almost a badass in a sense. But uh, <laughs> I'd be lying. It's okay. feel so connected to the people in the past of what it was like, you know, when you get you know, the Athabascan tribes of Alaska, when dog sledding was used to help each other out with hunting and bringing back game to villages. So proud of you guys though. That was so amazing. You guys are so good. I love you. Oh, the mask is Erica Force's first. Lena Streefer second. You came in short. Yeah, but they they're way behind me though, baby. I know. But I don't know. I don't know. I may be. Who knows if the people in the back are running fast or your time is so better. Did It's 12.8 average, you know, decent, I guess. <laughs> I think that the competition is much more tough. There is a lot of awesome killer teams here. Um, I mean, every time I look at I look at the roster and I look, oh, it's going to be a challenge to make top 10. There is such incredible teams that I've raced against in other races and through Canada and a little bit in Alaska, and um, it's fierce. <laughs> I'll, I'll, see, I'll see how the trail conditions are. But when we got to our hotel that yeah, night, that. we were able to pull up the official results for Alpine, and I come to find out I am in 18th place out of 26 mushers, which on the broad spectrum of things isn't too bad, but my goal, honestly, was to stay in the top 50%. That was a little defeating because I feel like we put some good effort, and that's kind of what we had to show. Granted, we still had six, seven, six more stages to go. And I was going to just try to keep climbing. I knew at that point it was going to be pretty difficult because of the kind of field we had, such a high caliber of athlete. 
This is catching up to me. Oh, Mr. Kroner. Oh, my taco. There's magic in the hour before the day. Chef. Dude, I feel so relaxed. Yeah, like I honestly yesterday was just so built up nerves, but you know, I'm going out there. I gotta remind myself I'm doing what I wanna do, you know, and I'm I'm here doing what I grew up doing. And uh, this is a race I've been dreaming about forever, so I'm just gonna enjoy it because once these few days are over, that's it for the year, you know? And uh, the whole fall, all summer, it's, it feels like such a long process to get here. It's just, I'm just gonna enjoy it. You know, and I'm gonna do the best I can. All right, got a latte. We're gonna run today. Yeah, Wally, woo! What do you think, man? We're gonna do this, yeah. <laughs> let's do this, yeah. Let's do this, let's do this, yeah, let's do it. Okay, let's get back on your side. Just uh, maybe their swings. Sometimes they get a little chewy. Thank you, Mary. I'm just saying a last prayer. Everything just to go smoothly. I don't want to make a fool of myself in front of hundreds of people. And before I know it, boom. okay, okay. I'm so proud of the dogs right now, man. Yeah. How you doing, man? God, it's a gorgeous day. Yeah. Take the off switch. Let's hit the off switch. Taz, you did so good. Oh, I'm so proud of you guys. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh, yes. So awesome. All right, beautiful. Are we ready? Okay. All right, beautiful. Let's go. Come on, beautiful girl. Thank you, Ben. Thank you. Okay, ha, 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 ha. Good job, beautiful. Good job, beautiful. On by, on by. Next one, next one. Next one. Okay, ready? So we're running through, and then we had the hard, the trail was so hard packed. 
And I was like, ah, oh, we'll keep it clean or whatever. And like five miles into it, I was just like, whatever, I'll just let him rip. And he just flew the whole time. I was like, all right, this is fun. Five miles ago, I was like, I can't believe where we're at right now. Kemmer was the stage that things started turning around for us. Dude, I'm so happy with these guys. And they all look at them, they're just like, yeah, cool, just chilling out. <laughs> Driving into the hotel that night, I was super anxious to look at the results, finally get back to some service. Hurry. Dana is the one who pulls up the results first and has this feeling or like this voice of such excitement. And I'm like, sweet, awesome, I did something. And I look over and we moved up a position, 17th. And well, there's a few people here. Anything can happen, you know? Mm -hmm. All I'm looking for though is, or the positive thing is that today was a step in the right direction, which is really good. For the day results, we actually moved up quite a bit. I think we were more in the middle of the pack for the daily result, the stage result. So that was a really good feeling. But cumulatively, we moved up a position, which was still good. conditioning and training we did. For the first time today though, I honestly feel like we belong here, Yukon. I really do. Yeah. I feel like we belong here. Like in anything, there's uh, there are bad apples everywhere. And in our sport, unfortunately, some there have been some bad apples. And I feel like those tend to get more of the attention. You know, when our sport is very very pure, very true. We can't force dogs to run. It just doesn't work. And I've shown, you know, a lot of my guests, even when we're running and my dogs stop to, 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 to go to the bathroom, they'll stop a whole team of seven, eight dogs, you know, just to go to the bathroom. And all the dogs look back like, wait, what are we doing? Why are we stopping? And once that dog's done, we move on our way. Every single dog has to be invested in that pole in order for it to succeed. And I guess, we feel like such a drive and such a, a mission to show the world what our sport really is. back and forth on my, my training logs and uh, just gonna apply those today and for tomorrow. But from what I understand though, there's a few mushers that were like, all right, well, there's no more flatland. We're just gonna be running the mountains now. So uh, yesterday though, for the day, I moved up to place 17th, which is great. I'm pretty close to some pretty good mushers, which I'm really excited about. I didn't think I'd be that close, but I don't know, there's still a few more days left to go. You two, here's the plan. We're gonna keep it steady, okay? We're not gonna go crazy fast like yesterday, but we're gonna attack the hills, okay? Just like we practice at home, we're gonna attack the hills, okay?
Bitte, okay, okay. <laughs> Today was was pretty rough. I think it was probably my worst run of this, of this stage series. We're in Big Piney, and uh, <laughs> it was rough. I, you know, from the start, we started in, going up an incline, and the dogs were still feeling good, wanted to run fast, and I held them back a little because of what I've heard about um, the climb. And just going up, it's like, man, it never ends. It never, never ends. And it just kept climbing and climbing and climbing. The dogs were just, they're definitely feeling it today. I think everyone was feeling it. I'm really proud of the dogs because of the way they ran. Like they ran yeah, with yeah. a lot of heart today. They really did. Like, he's like, seriously, you could not ask them to do anything more. And they gave me their all. They really did. It was, yeah, I'm gonna have to figure things oh out. Gosh. There are some hills to climb, so some of these teams that haven't seen the mountains will uh, probably pay the price today. Um, it was really competitive last year, and then they changed the format a little bit. So last year we had one 60-mile run, I think two 45s, and then the rest of them were 30s. So a little bit longer runs, and now this year they're all between 30 and 35 miles. So last year there was 14 competitors and it was super competitive and this year there's 24 competitors and it's even more competitive so it's, okay, so it's a lot of fun. Lot of Looked at the results, come to find out that I'm still in 17th place, which is great. Um, but I was just more so just kind of bummed with how that day went. And I, oh yeah, it's okay. If you just take it 10 minutes, that's to 12th position. You know what I mean? Like 10 minutes. I mean, which is a couple miles in that sense, but a couple mile in a long race like that isn't, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. A lot of that trail was like melted. I mean, yeah. there, there was pieces. Yeah, I mean, we were running on skinny, thin steps, um, stretches of snow. Tomorrow, I feel is kind of one of those where it puts the pressure. It'll kind of weed out those that, I don't know, if there's something going on, maybe there's, like a lot of people have said, there's going to be some huge changes in positioning. Um, I just have to, I feel like honestly, I just have to go out and race. Ramirez, por la raza, estoy corriendo por la raza. Okay, uh, what do you think, beautiful? All right, guys, so we got to climb today, kind of like yesterday, okay, Chep? Yeah, I'm going to need your help today, sweetheart, I really am, because you guys are tough, you guys, I need you to stay strong mentally, and I'm going to help everywhere I can, believe me with our best friends, the hills. We're just gonna make peace with them. We're just gonna run, that's what we're gonna do, okay? You guys are doing so good. I, I just pray that we're solid. Yes, Lord, I pray that we're solid, Lord, please. I can't do this without you. I need you to guide my dogs and my team. I need you to guide my mind. I guide my sled, Lord. My right shoulder feels like it's yanked out of place a little bit. I'm okay, it's just, you know, walk it off, you know? It's so funny, ever since, like, Tommy made that comment about the Mexican musher, everyone's like, wow, it's a Mexican running. I love you guys. We made it this far. We deserve to be here. It's intimidating sometimes, because you see Laura Dojero, you know, she's ran Iditarod. Chris Atkins up here that's taking off right now. Ran Iditarod.
hard to predict what's gonna happen on any given day, it really is, but you know, I'm doing what I love, you know? I'm out here doing what I love to do. Uh, this is a life that I've been blessed with and I'm gonna live every life, every day of my life, like doing this, man, you know? I just, it doesn't get better than this, honestly. It really doesn't get better than this. It's tough, this hill, it's freaking warm. Already, I knew this was gonna happen. But you know what, we're tough, guys. Come on, it's just like home. This is, this is a good feeling. So, I may not be with the huge, like, international elite of the elite mushing teams, but I'm, I'm like, in the pack. Where are you? I can't see. I'm still in 17th. See, wow. Not bad. At least oh still my gosh, 17. 17th behind. That is impossible. Wow. No way. Driggs is the most challenging course of the stage race. Not only is there 2,000 feet of elevation gain, but there's some gnarly switchbacks. Driggs was definitely a foreboding stage. Everybody had talked about that all week long and it was something that I myself was incredibly nervous about just because I had underestimated what all the other stages were like and we had already struggled so far. So going into this and knowing that Driggs was gonna be a hard stage, I was pretty terrified for him to go out and run this one. I can feel your heart beating. I'm gonna have Alaska up in lead with Chip. Oh man. I'm tired, guys. Are you tired? I'm tired. I need you to work with Cheppy. We all need to stay focused, okay, sweetheart? You can do it. I know you can. I have faith in you. I can feel your heart Gabriel, you keep talking to him, Gabriel. back and I haven't seen anyone. I really hope I didn't take a wrong turn somewhere. <laughs> that would suck. Woo! Hey guys, how are you? This is the reason why like I remind myself like 
this is why I love this so much, you know, and just being able to celebrate it with them. They ran awesome, like awesome. They gave me like everything they got. I told, uh, I told my wife, I told Dana yesterday that we were gonna try to push today and I think that's what we did. So I'm really curious to see <laughs> where we fall on the line. Dude, oh my God, I was right behind that guy. And that guy, what? We came in 12th overall that day, which was huge for us. Uh, that was the top 50%, and that was my goal from the get-go. That was an amazing run, and I'll, I'll never forget it. That run will always be ingrained in my memory for as long as I live. Last day of the race, uh, Teton County, just outside of Jackson Hole. It was more of just like a, for me, a celebratory run. I wanted just to get out there and run with the dogs and just finish this incredible, difficult week with just being with, with my kids out there. Oh, there you are. Hey, good lead today. So, hi, Denali. All right, Wally. It's your last race of your racing career, amigo. Yeah. Before you go on the tour teams, I think it's too fast, huh? You're still giving me everything you got, though, yeah, Mr. Wally? Keep your team focused, sweetheart. You keep your team focused, Jeffy. Good girl. Good girl. That's my girl. That's my girl. There we go. We have these. It's snowing, huh? You guys ready to go home? I am. I'm ready to go. That's every musher's dream, you know, to be one of the best. But even though we didn't do as well as we thought, I'm not gonna let this tear me down. I'm gonna wake up every day. I'm gonna go clean kennels. I'm gonna spend time with my dogs, loving on them like I always do. And we're just gonna keep running, living life like we always do. We live this life because we love it. Just so proud of these dogs, you know. They gave me everything they got, you know. Sometimes I just feel like I, I let them down. If we don't do as well, so, you know, it's just always a thing in my mind. It's always a mind game. I'm just like more so emotional because I'm just so proud of them, you know. You know this thing where I call them out when we're running. I call them out by name and they look back at me. I know we're like so connected. Boy, so good. So proud of you. Oh, yeah. That's what it's all about, you know. But uh, it will come. One day it will come. Yeah. One day. We'll be back next year. We'll be back. Will be a different story, maybe. Maybe. I hope. <laughs>